All right, welcome to the deep dive. Today we're going to be looking at something, uh, something pretty cool, something that could change how we learn software, especially, um, especially complex programs. Definitely. We've got this YouTube video. Uh, it's by a creator named Osasart called The Death of Blender Tutorials, Google AI Studio. Catchy title. Yeah, definitely grabs your attention. And for anyone who's ever, you know, tried to learn Blender or really any new software and just felt lost, this AI studio from Google might be like a uh, like a secret weapon, a shortcut to actually mm -hmm. understanding what you're doing. So in this deep dive, we're going to try to understand how this AI tool works and um, and really what it means for learning something as, as intricate as Blender. Yeah, we're going to break it down, give you the key insights, no information overload. Right to the point. So in the video, they jump right into a demo. The user opens AI Studio, mm -hmm. and there's this stream real-time option. And then you see this share your screen button, and that's when you realize this isn't just you know typing questions to an AI. Yeah. It's a bit different. It's next level. Because when you share your screen, you're giving the AI, uh, this AI is powered by Google's Gemini, a live view of your computer. And, and Gemini is designed to understand what it's seeing, not just text but the actual visuals. Like the user gets a warning, anything you can see on your screen, the AI can see too. So it has that visual awareness. Yeah. It's not just listening to you, it's seeing what you're doing. Exactly. Imagine like instead of watching a pre-recorded tutorial, you've got this expert looking over your shoulder, giving you advice in real time based on what's actually happening on your screen. That's wild. So the user has Blender open. And you know the first question is a classic beginner problem. How do I get rid of this default cube? And the AI doesn't miss a beat. It gives two options, boom. Hit the delete key or press X and confirm. No searching through menus, no digging through a tutorial, just like instant answers. And and because it sees the cube on the screen, it knows exactly what you're talking about. Context. Right. It gets it. And then the user asks, okay, how do I add a plane? Another basic thing in Alban. And the AI, again, just lays it out. Shift plus A, choose mesh, then plane, step by step, clear as day. So you can imagine... For someone just starting out, this is huge. It's like that hand-holding you need when you're learning something new. But beyond Blender, like, do you see this kind of thing working for other software? Oh, absolutely. Photoshop, coding, anything with a visual interface, the possibilities are massive. Okay, so the user has the basics down, and now they're like, all right, let's make a donut. Which, I mean, that's a rite of passage in Blender, right? The classic donut tutorial. Exactly. So the AI suggests adding a torus mesh and again, it walks them through it. Yep, the shortcuts, the menus, everything. Shift plus A, mesh, torus. But then, and this is important, it doesn't just leave them hanging with this you know, basic torus shape. It says, hey, you probably want to adjust the size and shape to make it look more like a donut. So it's anticipating what the user wants to do. It's thinking ahead, like a good teacher would. So naturally, the user's like, okay, how do I adjust the shape? And Blender has like a million tools for that. It can be overwhelming. But the AI focuses on the essentials. It says, all right, you've got scale, rotate, and grab. And it describes the icons, so you can actually find them. An arrow with a box for scale, a curved arrow for rotate, and a crosshair arrow for grab. Visual cues, nice. And then it gives the shortcuts. G for grab, R for rotate, S for scale, super helpful. And you can tell the AI is actually paying attention because it mentions that the user's mouse is already hovering over the rotate tool. Wow. So. The first attempt at shaping this donut doesn't quite work. The AI actually jumps in and gives feedback. What does it say? It, it's like, hmm, that looks a little flat and suggests making it thicker and making the hole bigger. So it's not just blindly following instructions. It's analyzing what's happening and offering guidance. And how does it tell the user to make those changes? Okay, so for thickness, it says, use the scale tool and grab the blue Z axis handle. That's the visual cue in Blender. For the hole, it initially says, use the scale tool, hold shift, and click the red X or green Y axis. But that doesn't go as planned, does it? Nope. The user ends up stretching the donut, making it all wonky, and this is where you see the AI's problem-solving skills. It's got to diagnose what went wrong. Exactly. And it figures out that the scaling was uneven, so it corrects itself. It says, okay, use the white circle in the middle of the torus first. That'll scale it uniformly. And then use the blue handle for the thickness. So it's learning from the user's mistakes. Adapting its teaching in real time. Pretty impressive, right? Definitely. So the donut's looking more like a donut now, but it's still a bit rough. Yeah. What does the AI suggest to make it look more, you know, polished? It says add a subdivision surface modifier. 
that basically smooths out the edges, makes it look more realistic, and it mentions that you can add materials and textures later to really make it pop. Now, finding those modifiers in Blender can be a pain. How does the AI help with that? It guides them right to it. It says, look for the modifier tab. It's the one with the wrench icon in the properties panel on the right. Then click add modifier. Then under generate, you'll find subdivision surface. Super specific directions. No more hunting through menus. Love it. Okay, now it's time for the icing. How does the AI approach that? Well, it suggests a really smart method. First, duplicate the donut mesh. That's the torus. Then scale the duplicate down a bit so it sits on top like icing would. And then you can adjust the shape to make it look, you know, more icing-like. Smart. And it gives those step-by-step -step instructions mm -hmm. for duplication too, right? Oh, yeah. So like the torus, press shift plus D, then escape. And to scale it down, use that scale tool again, drag the white circle in the middle. Perfect. But real icing isn't perfectly smooth, is it? It's got those little imperfections. Exactly. The user wants to make it look more realistic, less... Uh, Less perfect. And the AI is ready for that. What does it recommend? It starts talking about sculpting tools, you know, how to use them, where to find them, but then, uh-oh. Disconnected. Mm. Right at the crucial moment. It happens. Technology isn't perfect, right? And that's something to keep in mind. This is still early stuff. Mm. As cool as it is, there are going to be hiccups. So the user has to restart the conversation, share their screen again. But the cool thing is, the AI remembers what they were doing. It picks up where they left off. It even suggests adding a standard brown material to the donut itself. Whoa, so some context is retained, even after a disconnect? Yep. And then the final step, saving the file. Which can be confusing in Blender. But the AI makes it clear. Go to the file menu, choose save or save as, pick a location, give it a name, done. No more accidentally losing your work. Awesome. Mm -hmm. But then the user does something really interesting. They ask the AI for help with their YouTube outro. Wait, really? Yeah. They're like, can you write an outro telling people to like and subscribe and mention that if this video gets a thousand likes, I'll make a part two. So they're using it for creative stuff now, not just technical blender stuff. Exactly. And the AI comes up with this. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. And if this video gets a thousand likes, I'll make a part two. Thanks again for watching. Not bad. Not bad at all. So this whole demo, it really highlights the potential of AI Studio. It's not just about getting specific answers. It's about having this intelligent assistant that can guide you through complex software. It's like it lowers that barrier to entry, makes these powerful tools more accessible. And who knows, maybe it can even help with those creative aspects too. Yeah, but it's still early days. We saw that disconnection. There's going to be bumps in the road. Definitely. So the question is, what does this mean for the future? Will AI change how we learn? Will it democratize access to these tools? Big questions. Things to think about as this technology keeps evolving. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Until next time.